Hi guys, it's Mr. Pollock Biology here with a short video in a series on variation. So in this video I want to talk about the causes and types of variation, so here's our objectives. Oh, we're going to understand genetic and environmental causes of variation, we're going to describe the characteristics of both of these kinds of variation, and we're going to understand the value of twin studies. So let's get started by talking about what is this thing called variation. Well, Put simply, it's just differences that can be observed between uh, organisms. Now, that depends on what you're looking at, I guess, because we could be talking about genetic differences, we could be talking about physical differences. Um, but the important thing to realise is that we can talk about differences between species, which is interspecific uh, variation. So here we've got some finches, some different species of finch, and we can see there's loads of differences in the colours uh, of the plumage. Um, in other species of finch as well, there's a lot of variety in beak size, depending on what they uh, what they feed on. Um, something that Darwin looked into quite a lot. Uh, and this is interspecific variation, variation that occurs between different species. But also, we can look at differences between individuals of the same species, and this is intraspecific competition. So, for example, if we look at uh, the common dog, the household. Uh, domesticated animal, Dachshunds, Pugs, Alsatians or German Shepherds, whichever one that is, um, they're all the same species but they look very very different because of these intraspecific variations, things that in this case have obviously been bred for over many generations. So what causes these differences? Well probably the first one we should talk about is genetic influences. So loads of things can happen to cause individuals to appear different. Uh, mutations, random changes to the DNA can happen. Obviously Wolverine, not a real thing, but mutations they happen. Not quite as interesting, but nevertheless they exist. Um, and in meiosis as well, genetic material gets mixed up during crossing over, something that I'll try to do a video on. Um, so yeah, essentially you get muddled up in your, uh, your homologous chromosomes. Also, when the gametes fuse at fer fertilization, that whole sperm egg thing, if you're, a, if you're an animal, uh, that's pretty random. You've got millions and millions of sperm, and usually one, or depending on what species you are, many eggs. That's completely random which ones meet together. So, with the genetics side of things, you've got pretty much a finite range of phenotypes, you know? Um, and the environment has very little influence if it's controlled only by one gene, such as blood type. So, a finite range of phenotypes here, you can only be blood group A, B, AB, or O. There's no sort of in-betweenies. Okay? So, finite range of phenotypes. And the environments, because this is controlled only by one gene, um, the environment is not going to screw around with your blood type. You're not going to go out in the sun and come back a different blood type. You're not going to eat some different food and come back a different blood type. It's set by your genes. That said, the environment does have quite a big old influence. Um, and basically, your genes set the parameters, they set the limits of, uh, of the features that you can express. Um, and the environment modifies those and decides whereabouts, if we're thinking about height, which has been suggested is controlled by many genes, um, that your genes set how small you could be or how tall you could be, and your environment tells you whereabouts in that range of values you're going to end up. So for plants, it's nice and easy thinking about environment. You know, the amount of water you get, the amount of sunlight you get, the amount of nutrients you get from the soil. If you get the right amounts, you're going to grow up pretty, pretty big. But if you don't get enough sunlight, you're going to be weak and feeble. Um, so thinking about this in terms of graphs and things, um, so the environment can affect any traits that are controlled by more than one gene. Um, and because of this, and because of what we talked about, gene setting the range and, and environment telling you whereabouts in that range you end up, there's a very large range of phenotypes. And if we plot all of these in a graph, we see it's normally distributed. So here's the height of people in the UK. Um, there's that nice bell curve where the mean, the mode, and the median are all at the very centre, and we tail off towards the, the end. We don't have many extremes in size, uh, but sorry, that's an email coming through. Um, but yeah, we get this nice this nice normal distribution. So 
noticed with this trait, we can't group people into you know distinct groups of short in height, medium in height, tall in height. It's a finite, continuous range of phenotypes. So we can express it as a histogram rather than a bar chart as we would if it was purely genetic. But how do we decide whether something is genetically caused or environmentally caused? Well, we could use um, experimentation. In animals, we could use these things called twin studies to determine whether it's genetic or environmental variation. So two types of twins, identical and non-identical, um, and they're useful in different ways. So identical twins, uh, well, they have the same genes, so we can raise them in different environments and look for differences. Any differences we see, any variations, must be caused by the environment because their genes are identical. Um, and vice versa with non-identical twins, which have um, different genes, uh, we could raise them in the same environment and look for any differences, and those variations must therefore be caused by the genetics. So to summarise, variation can be caused by genes or environment, but mostly it's a combination of both, so genes set the limits and uh, the environment determines whereabouts in that range you end up. And that's pretty much it for variation. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you find this useful. Please like, comment and subscribe.